God Tier Podcast. The coolest battle rap podcast in the world on No Jumper, live with my co host. I'm so straight in your chick's mouth like Colgate. <laughs> Bringing it back to 08, your play upon the Lush Uno. And with us is uh, Come on. who I feel is the quintessential example of somebody that took their success in the realm of battle rap and used it as an opportunity to parlay multiple careers and uh in the world of entertainment and beyond uh my dog dumbfounded good to see you man. Mm. good seeing you guys man i missed your intros bro <laughs> <laughs> i dead ass missed He's that quality. how convenient on asian heritage month that i uh pull up on your show here come on come on <laughs> to meet the quota for no jumper the, the asian quota <laughs> I, hey bro you know um I believe the most viewed video in No Jumper history is the when Adam went to Stupid Young's hood in right. Oh, Long is Beach. that the most viewed? I believe most that's probably. the shout yeah, out Stupid Young, it, man. Yeah. Shout out Stupid Young. He's, so yeah, he's a good dude. So maybe this will be number two. I don't know. You, you tend to do pretty well in the views. So um, stupid and dumb. <laughs> stupid dumb. <laughs> stupid dumb. Now, uh, yeah, man, I, it's good to be here. I miss y'all. Uh, I miss you I'm too. seeing everything you're doing. I, I see everything that all battle rappers are doing because I'm I'm part of that family and like you said like just par seeing people parlay it into different shit you know like a uh, good example is uh, Nems you Absolutely. know like just seeing what he's doing yeah, seeing what you guys are doing lane. with the pod yeah. and the the fucking league and bringing that back and doing it for the culture what's crazy about Nems is I feel like a lot of people aren't even aware there's like a big disconnect between his current momentum and the fact that he He's even a has a past yeah, as a battle sure. rapper. I for remember sure. when uh, King of the Dot was bringing Nems back in like 2017 on the Mass 3 card. And he, I, I forget who his opponent was, but it, when Nems was battling, people were like, who's that? that that's what I'm saying. You know, when I my first ever tour in the U.S., my first time being in New York City, this was like almost 15 years ago, I went to uh, End of the Week. Right. EO Dub. Dub. EO Dub. And, Come and on. Shout Shout EO Dub. I made it to the man, final round. It was me versus Nems. Wow. And, and, and Nems beat me. Yeah. But I was. That's fire. But that man. was. I don't even know if he remembers that. But like, yeah. Oh, he remembers. <laughs> yeah. But I just remember that's where I met Nems. He, and I knew about him because of, uh, you know, j a jump off and shit during that time. Was it jump off? Well, he was yeah, on yeah. Fight Club. He was on Fight, Fight Club. He battled on jump shit. off, but he too. Did. He did yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I remember I was. I always wanted to go to EO Dub because they would do all these like like freestyle competitions where there was props and, and you know, it was like five different categories. Right. Did Technique you had to, and uh, Solomon battle at EO Dub? Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, they, they had Solomon all these cool Iron things. I, I, I was in. The, I did EO Dub back in the day, like in yeah. 05. Yeah, um, yeah. So I remember that final round. It was me and Nems. Yeah. So did y'all actually battle? Yeah, we battled, and then he he beat me. Where's that footage at? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't know. It was it was towards probably like when end of the week was probably starting to end. You know what right. I mean? Um, but it was definitely an experience. Like cause I've heard about it. You know. That's amazing. And I think they, they, they still do like online shit. But yeah, shouts to EO Dub. Um, what's interesting about you is so many people have attempted to make the transition into, and I know you've done way more than strictly music at this point, but the transition from battle rap to music. And uh, I was talking about this with uh, Avocado the other day. Yeah. And uh, you, I remember you ba when you battled. Uh, I think it was when you battled con either conceded or Diz. Yeah, you you did, and there was maybe like two or three hundred people there. It wasn't like a, a sold out event. And then you wound up a month later on tour as a rapper, as a performer, not as a battler, selling out that same venue. Yeah, like I mean, for me, you know, I started. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I started. You know, well, a lot of the, some of those battles that I did was in route during the tour. Right. You know, like I remember when I battled Kid Twist, like that was my Toronto stop. Yeah, on tour. I remember that. Right. I remember. And that. I wasn't prepared <laughs> like that well on that one because of that reason. Like I was on the road trying to get ready for this battle, and like you know, it's hard. You try to work on the road, like even rappers, like no, no, I'm taking much. my studio with me, and it's it's hard, you know, because there's partying, drugs, everything. You know, it's like. So I wasn't there able. There is. To, <laughs> so I wasn't able to like really focus on that battle because it was part of the tour. Yeah. You know what I mean. You, you, but that, you was tell, early, I that. that was early. That was early. That, that was like, was like oh nine. Yeah. I that was say. like one of my early tours and shit. But you know, like I was playing mad colleges and shit like that. But I started, you know, like just like all of us, like in battle rap. I mean, you might have made tracks, but I was just freestyling and battling before mm -hmm. I even made my first song and shit. You know what I mean? And but. 
yeah that, that was like uh you know i made a solid money off of like doing college shows and asian student orgs and shit like that well, you know and and that was on the heels of like the success of uh the the you versus tantrum and then the and yeah. then and then the the viral thanks to you kick, on, that, on that battle right video, there another battle you set up i, I remember i remember uh you, you calling me i remember this so clearly of like exactly when you called me for that battle like i was in my apartment uh one of like the studio apartment spot he calls me and he's like yo i have this idea i want you to bow tantrum and i i heard about tantrum seeing scribble jam battles he was the the asian dude you know and i keep up on all my asians everywhere and shit <laughs> he mentioned it and as soon as he said that like the wheels were like turning in my head like i i got it i understood it yeah. remember i was like telling you on the phone too yeah. i was like bro like no, I think this shit is a thing. Like I, I, I didn't yeah. catch. I was I was wondering if I was gonna because at, at the time, my relationship with you was like we had battled against each other in yeah. WRCs, maybe done a few shows or this or that, but we didn't really know each other. We became friends like yeah. after that, really became closer. So I wasn't sure how you were gonna take that. Like, yo, this is sounds kind of weird. Like I'm being racially profiled. Nah, or some nah. Shit. Like, like you know, my whole thing is I'm like you. I see shit like as a producer, right? Right. Like uh, you know. I, I've been good at things here and there, like rapping this or that, but the biggest thing I've been good at is putting people together. Curation. Curation and producing. So, like, as soon as you said that, like, I understood it, bro. Yeah. And even, even before the battle, like, if you run the sound clip back of, of that, I'm like, I say something about that. Like, right. th like this Asian versus Asian yeah. shit is going to go crazy or something on YouTube or something. I think part of it, too, what helped you, too, is the fact that he was Chinese and you're Korean. So you were there, able to get on the there's more the specific, more thing. specific things yeah. that you could get on. I mean, that didn't matter too much. We well, didn't the call jokes, each other Chinese, you had a lot of Korean, Chinese Korean, Japanese. Jokes, though, but you had like Chinese jokes. Yeah. I mean, like the, his phone and number had, and all and that. And he like, had Korean like referencing like Starcraft. Yeah, that, 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 I thought that was amazing. That's why it was a dope battle because... Like, I say this a lot. When I was battling just non-Asian people, like, obviously, I'm getting hit with shit that, like... Typical you know, shit. Typical shit yeah. that people... Because people don't know much about Asian culture. But right. when I did that battle, there was so much specific-ass Asian shit in it. Yeah. Like, StarCraft is a very... You have to know. ...specific online gaming thing, you know? And, like, certain Rice Rocket shit. Like, oh, like the Mickey Mouse hands in yeah, the house like, dance. Yeah, exactly. That was, that like, was amazing. That's, like, rave culture Asian yeah. shit. You know right. what I mean? So there was all these specific <laughs> Yo, that <was> things so <laughs> that, like... That's why I thought for culturally it was dope. People just see it as, like, oh, you're just making fun of Asian shit. No, it's deeper than that. There's so much shit, you know? know what i mean like cultural references that like you have to know the culture to get you know right right so i want to take it back to the beginning you have a very interesting origin story and you've made records about it which are really dope and uh so you're actually you're born in argentina correct oh, like, yeah i was born in argentina buenos aires yeah buenos aires my um my mom and dad are both korean but my my mom moved there when she was 15 with her with her parents and then my dad moved there for work in his early 20s and they met because they're like oh we're korean <laughs> Look up. And then, not too many koreans out there i assume uh, there, i don't know no like, there was there's a little town and okay. there's like like a lot of them migrated from korea and kind of you know resided there and then my, my dad and mom met they got married and had me and my sister the craziest part was my sister was one years old and i was three years old they moved to america my mom smuggled me and my sister to the mexican border to coyote is like crazy yeah so she was carrying two asian babies with asian lady with like other latino mexican families just sneaking through the in through the border that's incredible and yeah. a lot of people don't know because uh, you pretty much spent 99% of your life to this day. We were just saying, uh, you're the mayor of K Town to this day. So, I mean, you, since we came into this country, yeah, we've been in Koreatown. Koreatown, Los Angeles. And what's interesting about Koreatown is it's got a very large Latino population. It does, it so, does. And that's, you know, that's why I always say it's funny that my mom's been in this country like over 30 years and doesn't speak any English because she got around speaking Korean and Spanish, like right. in, in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Doesn't speak a lick of English still. Crazy. And you grew up uh, in K Town and that whole like K Town Pico Union, just like directly west of um, downtown LA sector. It's yeah. like the, the Rampart district, basically. I was definitely Rampart, like Pico Union and Koreatown. Right. Like, where like my that, main neighborhoods. That yeah. little trifecta is one of the most densely populated areas in the entire US. For sure. Um, and so. What was, and did you go to like Belmont High I or did. something? Okay, yeah, I assume. <laughs> Damn, this fool fucking knows so much <laughs> shit about the region. Like, I'm an Angelino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, no, like, I went to Belmont and then I got kicked. I didn't get kicked. Well, 
I didn't get kicked out. I moved schools to Marshall, which is like right. by, by like Silver Lake yep. and Los Angeles. And they're like rivals, actually. Right. And then I dropped out in the end of 10th grade. And my parents didn't know I dropped out for another two years. Just because like, you know, Amazing. there's a lang language disconnect. <laughs> so I just Amazing. bullshit in my Fire. way. Fire. And that's how I was able to go to even like Project Bloat and shit. You know, like. That's what, that's what I was going to allude yeah, to. How like, did you, what brought you to start freestyling in South Central LA? So I was freestyling Park? in my school, you know, in house parties, you know, like doing well and killing it. I was like, fuck it, this is just for the bitches and drinking and shit. And then uh, in 10th grade, I was in uh, Marshall and. Marshall kids are like, they're like artsy. They're shit. hipsters. They're hipsters. Shit, yeah. And so, you know, they knew about Bloat. And I think some of the J5 dudes went to Marshall and stuff. Okay. Um, and this one Filipino kid was like, yo, there's a spot in Lamert Park. You should go. All the best, like, rappers go there. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm down. I put, So one night he picks me up, Thursday night, picks me up from my crib at like 10 p.m. We drive down to like South Central. And I don't go to South Central often during that time. You know what right. I mean? I was like, where the fuck are we going? <laughs> going like deep. And then, cause I was living off of like third street. We're going to 43rd. Right. You know? right. So we go to 43rd and pull up. There's just hundreds of people on, on the street. Back then it was so much tighter. Like, you know, it was like hundreds, like eight ciphers going on. The, the, the open mics going on do, inside. Do you feel like the, like the online digital revolution, like took people off the oh, street yeah. also bro I, I i'm you know there's no open mics no more bro yeah. like let's be real there's no fucking open mics. twitter no space open mics <laughs> the, yeah that ass like there isn't I, I mean the online shit did because kids like now are like i just want to get an interview on something i want to get a manager you or know they'll send like their immediately video, or they send a video and like you know what i'm saying instead yeah. of or just putting a clip on their instagram and instead people are of more introverted through the internet now correct 100 you know, yeah because you live on cyberspace really yeah 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 and then, you know i get it if we haven't allowed like many spaces where people are just like comfortable and shit you know what there's I mean? cons and pros to it you know there I, mean? are, there are, I feel yeah. like i feel like on a, on a on a global scale it's the only it's the only way like where we're headed to be able to do like cyberspace like meetings or battles would be the only place you could actually have everybody from around the world be in one room at the same time if that makes sense yeah i mean the whole idea we weren't the, able to do that. the metaverse shit is like introvert like world right you know? 100%. it's like right. it's Fully. accommodating <laughs> it's a, introverts yeah. uh, like completely it, you it's know? a hermit's guide to, uh, to <laughs> yeah. accepting your lifestyle well, yeah th there's pros and cons the pros are now i'm able to link with a producer in germany like it's nothing you know what That's i mean true. i'm able to like there's it, but I even can, more like I watching record, a concert like or watching a my, battle i can record music myself i could uh right i could right. have it distributed like i don't need to network with through a local scene to get that pop in. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the negativity is now there is no local scene. I mean, we were lucky in our generation where we got to kind of experience, we're experiencing we both. We were like the, the transition. The, the last, the, was that millennial or something like that? Something That's, like that. Yeah, so the, like, we got both worlds, which is sick. That's why I love my life experiencing that and yeah, also yeah, no, being we're lucky. in this world right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's great. Um, but yeah, just uh, go. Where were we at? The uh, so you start. So you oh, get yeah. to the blow. So I went to the blow, yeah. and I'm thinking I'm the shit. You know, already just a young, arrogant, like all of us when we're kids and shit. Stick my head in a cipher and like just hear the rappers rapping. Like even like No Can. I think that was one of the first times I heard No Can. I fucking. What year was this, by the way? Two thousand three or four. Mm -hmm. Two thousand three or four. A couple years four. before I met you, because I yeah, met yeah. you. In so, 05 so you're a teenager. Six. I'm a teenager. Yeah. yeah, I'm scrawny little Korean kid and shit. Glasses and shit. And then I stick my head, I hear like No Can and other rappers, like Otherwise and shit like that. I fucking otherwise, froze the man. fuck up, bro. I couldn't spit. I mean, one hearing line. Otherwise? I couldn't, I couldn't rap one. I was ready to rap, bro. I'm like making my way through the cypher, ready to spit. I couldn't fucking rap one line, bro. And then I'm there for hours, standing there for hours. And then now it's closing up. I'm walking back to the car like, fuck, I should have rapped. <laughs> like, to keep I, in I, context, I he, was, he was thrusted into like rapping in front of like the arguably yeah. the best battle rappers being ever. the best like, in some your of the best school battles. or your you know house parties ain't shit yeah, otherwise this, no bro. can were different it, it ain't the shit. <laughs> no can was like amazing yeah, to yeah, me bro no, no, no. We all, man no can <laughs> still is. that's one of my biggest no, we had a great say, interview with him. freestyle inspirations hands down there's no doubt about he's, it yeah he's he, a goat he, that motherfucker i mean you know no can is still amazing, but if you heard no can at that time, when he's fully dialed in, you would have absolutely been amazed. Right, he was incredible, fucking incredible. And um, 
Is that around the time you met Satire as well? I met Sat, Sat was like a baby. I met him a few years later. He was like a fucking kid. Right. I, but Lyra was there the first time. Lyra, Lyra Flip Lyra was Flip, there. Man, he was the only the other. He was the only other Asian motherfucker there, and he was always getting into battle. Someone was always trying to roast him and shit. Lyra and, Flip beat me at the blow before. Lyra is, I would say, one of the most consistent dudes. Like people don't give him enough credit because obviously when yeah. he first came into the battle thing, like he he didn't have like he he was like warming up into it, but like. During that time, he was just hungry. He was already doing it. Like, the thing about Lyra is once he started to shine once his skill set matched his tenacity because right. he was always just like, not he had no fear whatsoever. He, he was down to He was the one Asian mix it up. dude there in the midst of like a right. hundred black dudes where he was already going in aggressively. You so know? speaking of satire and Lyra, and obviously there's verbs and a lot of people, yep. Alpha... How did Thirsty Fish come along? Like that, Thirsty uh, Fish was a group that I was in with Open Mike Eagle, who's still fucking she's killing it. Lo- love him yeah. too, man. He's open, amazing. Yeah, he's too. amazing. Open and Mike. Psychosis, open who, Mike, Psychosis was a crazy, amazing rapper too. He, he actually, still is man. actually. He's, yeah, he's I haven't talked to him in nice a while, but he was probably one of the nicest pen game like dudes. He would write insanely, bro. Psychosis. I mean, we just formed a group and then different we psychosis. So yeah, I just realized that. When oh, yeah, it's, said that. Yeah, 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 it's just different. It's different, 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 yeah. And, uh, and then uh, Swim Team, <laughs> which was like the bigger crew with Satire. Okay, no, no, that's and what I meant. So, Thirsty Swim, swim Team. Swim team. Yeah, How yeah. Did this, so, is it because you met Satire? We were at the time, just... we were our, that generation of Blood pretty much that were like the best dudes at the time. So, we were like, let's form a group with all the best what dudes. What year was this? This was 2006 seven? Six or seven, like that. Like, yeah. literally around the time Crack City was formed. Yeah. So it, they were, we were at the pit doing that. They were at the blow doing that. Co- that was creating, definitely, like, you guys so definitely crazy. had your separate scene during the that crack time. City thing. What like, was, what was the year? 05, 06. What was the year we battled at a basement? The year we battled <laughs> at the basement was at, around. Because we the were kids then. End too, of 05, bro. beginning of 06. That's it was so put crazy. online in 06, but I think it took a while to hit the we internet. We were fucking kids in that one. Yo, too, let me man. tell you how that happened. So uh, <laughs> around that time, you know, I was battling all over LA, and I remember dumbfounded running into you. A couple at a couple of other events mm-hmm. where you seen me like do some crazy shit. I think it was an event where I either made it to the final and won the whole thing or didn't win. And you like were very aware of what I was able to do. And I showed up to the basement that day. You and No Can were over there and there was like I suppose and all them. And like I walked up and I remember this is what you did. You looked at me. You're like, oh shit, this fool showed up. That's what, <laughs> yeah. you, that's what you said. Bro, I'm like, what's the, up, the, man? The, the, the fucking the pit days, you were fucking definitely legendary. You, an issue. you were definitely a problem, bro. I mean, like, that's how we made our name out here. That but, yeah. was I mean, honestly, the the pit was the place that really kind of got me into the idea of doing these a cappella kind of battles. Oh yeah, correct. Uh, Are you through your own yeah, shit? Yeah, because you know, it. I was I was just doing like tension was my first non beat battle. Besides you know what I mean? the WRCs. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Jump WRCs and jump offs and. I had so much fun. I it's really, your first written acapella battle, bro. First, yeah, written acapella. Right, yeah, because right. jump balls, we were fucking freestyling for you were a day out straight, route. bro. Yeah. Like the from sunlight to night. Like, Red Bull and pizza. Holy fuck. That was Facts. a mental challenge for me, bro, because I had never done anything like that. You know, I've never done a two on two or, you know, it was it was new for you me. You and Sat were fucking incredible. <laughs> yeah, that was our first like kind of intro, I think, to that world for us. Like, and we had fun with it. So like we're also doing mad drugs during the whole thing. <laughs> I was saw, definitely if you saw our interview. Though, <laughs> I was juicing. I, mean, I was see. off the Adderall. For I sure. was off uh, Adderall, coke, uh, drinking. Like I was on. We were on drugs. If you saw crazy. our interviews, were like touching our nose and <laughs> That's crazy. fucking going nuts, bro. Like little crackhead kids. We were crackhead kids during that. Time. That that was that that was the wave at the time. It was. A lot of fun. Um, uh, hold on, hold on. Speaking of like the 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 pit and inspiring you, you technically booked me for a battle, and you did it on the spot. Remember? So I show up to the bar exam. Oh yeah, bar I exam, have yes. the MTV crew following me around yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah. battling for a million dollars on fucking TV. Oh yeah. Remember? I show up to support <laughs> your shit. I wasn't showing up for shit. You yeah. invited me. You're like bar yeah, exam. Yeah. Come down and support. It's at the pit. Like so, I show it's. My fucking world, I love it. Like the environment is just amazing. Yeah. The shit's popping, you know what I'm saying? And who shows up? Billy Boondocks, before his name was Billy Boondocks. Right, right. Shouts out to Billy Boondocks. Yeah, yeah. Mr. E.T. E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's in the front telling everybody the same shit that he's been doing in the past, like, you know, I mean, what he does. Like, he's like, I'll kill all of you. He's in the front. 
trying to mark out every single person that raps, like rap right now, doing that shit. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. And you came up to him. You're like, hey, bro, like if you're serious, there's a guy in here, you know, <laughs> da, 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 da. and he told you, man, what? Fuck that. Bring him on. And I could hear it like happening. And then you walk up to me while it's happening. You're like, hey, bro, there's this guy. I was like, I, I could already see what's happening. Bring him in. So you had no <laughs> Wait, intention. Did I really do? I don't remember. Yeah, bro, this. You That's walked crazy. up to me. And you're like, bro, this guy over <laughs> here is talking about like he'll fuck everybody up in here and like i like sounds I told, like i, I got told, the guy for you yeah, yeah you told him that so when you told me that i was already like That's peeping what was going on and in my funny. head i was like damn i got the mtv dudes with me they were begging me outside for a battle yeah, yeah. like they're like come come on man like we're perfect, following yeah. you around like i'm like i'm not battling i'm coming here to support my homie so then it becomes me battling so That's i'm not even ready. i pulled two rounds out of my ass against them That's and it was hilarious bro it was Two of my best fucking rounds ever, bro. That's Still, funny that, that I had footage a, is amazing. That's funny that I had a light bulb. Like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> this would be fucking. Yeah, no, this would destroy. You posted it on the spot. And that's just, amazing. It was I don't even remember doing that, which is yeah, incredible. And incredible. that's the thing. Someone, someone might have to pay like eighty thousand dollars to get Diz to battle. Know, right? But <laughs> if he's in the right mood, that's how it always is. Though rap. it's yeah. always like that with rappers. It you know? was. Like, it was the timing. It was at, first of all at the time too. You see me. I'm wearing the grind time shirt. The same shirt I just battled Asasino in, and it's like such a. Like I just was was there, and I was just you know I'm in f I'm like if anyone tests me I'm gonna kill them like I'm ready. I gotta run that one back. No, you gotta. It's actually hard. Look, yeah, gotta, it has a big back. story to it. Let me tell you yeah. why. Mr. E. T. Later on quit after that. He was so devastated from that battle because he didn't understand. Like he was more of an artist, and in, in defense of him, he was he was a songwriter and he wanted to battle and he felt like he could kill anybody because he had bars, but he yeah. still hadn't jumped in a battle. So he just jumped in against the craziest dude on earth his first time. And he just got unlucky because he kept on playing Russian roulette. And he just kind of just, I popped up and it was just like, yeah. like Damn, this is you the, really he helped him find name. his path, bro. Look, bro. He, he helped he, him find his true call. He, look, he quit, though. <laughs> and he came back as Billy Boondock and changed his name because he killed that but, character but let off. Let me tell you right now, like getting served is the most humbling thing for any human being. It's yeah. like It's like, you know, growing up. You gotta get punched or slapped at least once in your life. I, I love this analogy. Real shit. You, you gotta. You know the kids that don't ever get slapped growing up or whatever. They yeah. have a vibe, they have certain, certain aura, a certain aura. Them. Like it, they're not humbled. You know what I mean? And they talk like they run the world, walking around the world, like you know whatever. They grow up to be Karens or whatnot. You know, and then but. That shit is like what you're saying. It's like, you know, I've, we've all been there. We've all f hit the lowest point in, the, in battle rap of getting served or whatnot. That shit, man, this is one of the craziest feelings. It's like a comedian bombing or, you know what I mean? Right. All that shit. Or so. just like not doing what you, like, I don't ever feel like I've been served, but I've lost battles and I to felt yourself. like I've, like I, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, left feeling true. defeated and that feeling of being humbled. Oh, I've like seen where, you feeling defeated, yeah, bro. Which <laughs> battle? Uh, locksmith for yeah. sure <laughs> that was i fucked up because that battle so was the first time in yourself, i was it was bro. the first time i memorized four perfect rounds in my life that's I what i'm saying it wasn't like it was one of those things where i, I could tell you really Super hated defeated. yourself oh dog i it. punched the parking meter outside yeah, like I I that's another example the of you losing to yourself mm -hmm. that's not um mm. but but it definitely can be a catalyst for growth you could either let it Defeat you, or you could use it as an you experience. Have to, you have to, to. You got to let it. You use that to grow. I went on a know? rampage after that. That's like you know, Project Blood was like that because you you sign up to do a song, and they encourage the crowd to start chanting, "Please pass, pass the, the mic. mic." If you, if you're whack, and the, the DJ stops it, whether it could be like 15 seconds into the song. Yeah. And I remember one dude went up, and they we passed them. And he was like, fuck y'all, y'all don't know shit. And he slammed the mic and he just dipped, you know? <laughs> but it's like, you could either do that or you could be like, fuck that, next week I'm going to come back and I'm going to not get passed. You know what I mean? So, like, there's two ways you could take it, you know well, what I mean? Well, the amount of rappers in the, I mean, you're talking about, like, Fat Joe got please pass the mic. True. Like, like hip-hop yeah. yeah. legends. True. So, you like, the blow didn't discriminate. And I was curious, Very I'm glad you brought it back to the blow, like, when did you realize that like people were actually fucking with you and you thought you were people thought you were dope over there too like what? i mean it, it took a while bro like it wasn't like they they accepted me off the jump you know what i mean but i was just i just i was addicted to that place like i really loved it it was like every week thursday night homie picked me up we drive over there culture. and in one week like he didn't pick me up and i was like what the fuck's going on he's like oh, i'm not gonna go tonight i'm like 
no, we gotta go. <laughs> so I ended up fucking like I taking think, the bus. I think right? I took the bus to like fucking South Central and, and with like a razor scooter afterwards, like razor scooter because the buses weren't running or some shit. And that shit was wild, bro. Um, but I was just addicted to that place. I was addicted to freestyling, like all of us. You know, we've we've all been addicted to freestyling and battling. I also, it was more like not even just me always rapping too. It was just to like witness greatness, bro. Like I would go there and just see legendary battle rappers yeah. and freestylers, all the time. flawless. Otherwise, Riddler, <laughs> no can't. Fa flawless was. I think the flawless era was a special era. Like this is all beast. like these are all names that like most people aren't gonna know, you know. But there was a time at Project Blood where these characters would come out of nowhere, you know. Like Open Mike when he came and he's from Chicago. He was pterodactyl. Yeah. yeah. Open Mike Eagles from Chicago and he just starts freestyling. We're like, who the fuck is this dude? And then you see, <laughs> and then you see flawless coming from uh, like IE or some so shit. The valley or from, no, he was, uh, he, he was from A one A, wasn't he? No, I no, he, he was from like I, a, that's where I battled him a bunch of times. Yeah, he's from like I don't know San Bernardino, so him San Bernardino or some shit, and he's like this big dude, right? Big fat dude named Flawless, and he just had this style like. Finally gave no can do like a, a, a run, you know. He, like, he yeah, he was dude. nice as fuck. He beat actually me and Flawless have battled a couple times. He beat me one time, and like it's crazy. The the one time like when I got him, I got him with like all fat jokes, and he wanted to fight after it. I remember, <laughs> I remember this month. Okay, he was let me so tell you like, bad. Holy I remember shit. this fool battling Lyra Flip on stage at the Bloat, and he had the funniest line because you know his like swag, like he has like a this yeah. weird, crazy swag. No, he to carried him. his weight around. Insane. Yeah. He would be like Lyra Flip. You're so ugly, you can make a mirror sick. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. just the, you know that low voice he had? Like yeah. that, it was just the funniest fucking shit, bro. Like, yeah, it was, nah, and it was, it was nice all on beat freestyle on stage, so it was hilarious too. And um, then, like, it seemed like you, it's funny because both of y'all had your grind time debuts <laughs> at the same events. Oh, right. That at too. the Battle of the Bay, we too. Like, we, like, showed up was at that the same time. Was that your debut for Grind Both of us. We showed up at the same your, time to the league. Same well, and, and you had <laughs> the whole story of you even, that battle almost not happening, the U-verse tantrum that we talked about yeah, earlier right. in battle, because you had car trouble on right, the way right, up. Right, right. And we had, had car trouble. And man, I was, and I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was yeah. really nervous about that battle because we also had that Frankie Wops and Juice Chase you had battle. Two battles, yeah. yeah. So, and at that one, we like straight up freestyled. Like, we had no, like, I, I, had, I put all my energy into the tantrum shit, and I was like, fuck, we don't, you know. So, we had a few like written things, but for the most part, we just had to go freestyle. But I, I loved some of my freestyle and, and written lines for that one. That it was like, uh, well, book em Wops, yeah, or, book em wops. <laughs> yeah, butcher shop. <laughs> like, like, y'all look like y'all work at a butcher shop. Book em wops. You're such a good freestyler that it's people would think that it was written. I, yeah, I'm not. It's more like I wouldn't say I'm like an amazing freestyler, but I always like I always have good like one liner jo joints. Always, yeah, after, one liners were impeccable. Like, man. That was my thing, you know. Yeah. Like, but when we had similar trajectories in the beginning because we debuted, y'all were the at, first. But two. he battled the source after me, and like right. we both battled the source. Well, y'all we, were the first two to really like catapult to fame from um, like the, from out was, here on the on the on the new the, era in, in the new grind era. time. Yeah. Period. You're right. Like, I mean, right. LA dudes, you know, I'll, I'll say LA dudes like no can and Diz during that time. Like, I wasn't even at. But like, he's I, talking I, about grind time oh, when grind it time, started. Right yeah, yeah, when it started, yeah, it was we came specifically in, me and you really like coming yeah, from LA and we had Satire. You and I came me and in for sure and we kind of became like the LA big yeah. grind time guys. But in the LA scene, I was always looking up to like dudes like no can and this fool because they would always go to the finals. Right. And, but I'd be in like the final maybe four or six. But right. the finals were always like this fool or uh, uh, no. Uh, no can and shit like that so but then like you know you're that battle versus tantrum and it's so funny because these numbers sound so small now but you y'all were the first to hit a hundred thousand views and yeah. you did it very quickly that was uh man that battle i would say changed my life 100 percent. i i can't even front bro it's not even about the views of it or nothing it just changed so much shit like that was the first when that battle you came out after that shit. bro asian kids would come up to me everywhere in the country bro and like just all of a sudden like fuck with me because when i was right when i first came up like rhyming and shit all my neighborhood asian kids that were like gangster asian kids like they just thought i was a nerd you know right. what I mean? <laughs> like they were just like that's no, why don't shit. you rap like tupac you know it's like they didn't like the way i rapped i was like a super underground indie dude you know i have weird songs and shit but then after that battle, all the hood Asian motherfuckers was like, you're holding it down for us and shit. Right. Yo, it, so it changed fun. like crazy, bro. Like the whole vibe of the energy changed the whole community with me. You know what I mean? Like I was always kind of an outcast, 
amongst my own even Asian kids growing up. You know, I was like a arty, artsy. I, I think in a way, kid, I like, think in a way, it, dis yeah. it displayed it displayed because because the battle itself displayed Asian hip hop. Like it showed within the Asian community that you don't have to battle somebody from outside it to make it entertaining. You were the first guys to do this. You didn't need anybody else. It was literally you two guys putting on a just as entertaining as anybody else battling. And to be honest with you, you're the ones who went the most viral. You went to a million faster than anybody, not just 100,000. Right. Y'all were the first to hit like a million, I, bro. I think culturally it was like a very, it was like an interesting moment. You know, people don't realize It superseded how, battle rap. Dude, think about two Asian battle rappers going up against each other. Like, yeah, that's, no one that's even, my point, what I just yeah. yeah, the chances of that even happening is like weird. Like, but the fact you could put on such a high quality entertaining battle, I think that's what made it so. Like, exactly. they felt like they had. Me like everybody felt like they had something. It was like Tantrum was a, the other Asian dude who had bars. You know what I mean? Who who could like have all this funny lines and all this shit, and he did it. You know, and we had two different energies too. Yeah, no, the so contrast. Everything was worked so well. You yeah. know. But then when you, I feel like you started to blow up so quick, not just within the context of battle rap, but now you're releasing viral content that's getting millions of views. You're putting out music videos. Oh, that's, wait, the kick. Yeah, well, the kick yeah. was the one. <laughs> the, the kick, the kick was the one. You so went four million on that, that. That was my first ever video on my YouTube channel. And the whole plan around that was to launch my YouTube channel with a viral thing. So my, I met this dude who was my friend. He became my manager. And he, he actually managed and Anderson Pack for a while early Car, on. Right? That's how you had that yeah, connection. Yeah, so, so he was managing... Uh, uh, both of us at the um, at the time, and he was he was like, "Yo, you got all these battles, and they're getting millions of views, but they're not on your channel. You're, you're not." You're, I'm like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "I'm fucking famous. I'm on YouTube, millions of views." He's like, "Yeah, but like, that's not your content." It's and I didn't even think about this. I was just like, "Millions of views. Who gives a fuck, right?" And he's like, "No, you should start your own channel." I'm like, "All right." He just I, I didn't even care. He was like, "You should," and I was like, "Okay, cool." It's like, "Let's do a, let's start a YouTube channel." He's like why don't we do something off of your battle shit and like try to get it viral? So, and then I, and he, uh, he was like, my idea was like, why don't all these, I looked up uh, top viewed battles and they're all ones that ending in fights. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, all the millions of mm -hmm. views were the ones that end in punches. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. And I was like, what if I put my own twist to it since I'm Asian and put like a Kung Fu or martial arts element Roundhouse to it. kid. Yeah, and we did that shit. We planned the whole shit. So the stunt devil is the, the stunt, one that stunt That's not even me doing the I know. stunt. You yeah, know what no, I mean? There's a stunt I get devil. People, but people, th people know it's fake, but they, don't, just wearing the same but they don't even realize that I'm not even the one doing the kick. Right. Because right. Right. I don't... We've <laughs> never either. seen yeah. you do another kick. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they pushed me out of frame and then the guy who's dressed up as me, his name's Travis Wong. This guy's a legit stunt dude. Fire. Like he still does shit Shout for all the Travis. martial arts. <laughs> he comes back in, it, he does a kick, gets put, and then I come back in the frame, yeah. getting held back by uh, intuition and shit right. in the thing. That's so good. Uh, and then, and then that whole day, I, I plan it like tweets, hit up the you know the homies, like all this. Shit. I'm like, you won't believe what happened in the battle. Like I was tweeting that shit throughout the day. Like someone pushed me, and like people are hitting me up, like Alchemist and his hitting me up. <laughs> like it was, it was a wild shit. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it, evidence it, it was really like, worked, man. Evidence was like me and uh, uh, Alchemist got a bet going on. Like I think it's real. He thinks it's fake. <laughs> like people. That's so far. It was, it was fucking a debacle, and that shit went viral. And then from there, I just started dropping music videos and content. And shit what really went crazy for you, quick. And you were the first because like Diz was blowing up. But within the context of battle rap, yeah, and he exactly. kept it insular to battle rap culture. You were like superseding it and going in a different direction. Did was that difficult? Because like, did you still have the? Were you still wanting to do more battles, but you just couldn't because it didn't make sense for your trajectory? Or I definitely love battling. I still fucking love battling. Like, yes. because the thing is, I love roasting. Say it again. I love, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because <laughs> we're gonna book him. Writing battle, <laughs> battle. Let me rap. find out, dumb. <laughs> we're gonna book him. <laughs> no, li li writing battle rap lines is the most fun and natural thing. For it me is because it is, yeah. I love jokes and I love rhymes. And you like making fun of people. Yeah, I love, that's my like <laughs> literal passion. Like, I, I love that the most out of anything is making fun of people roasting and when you hit it when you do it with a rhythm it's like it, it's even harder you know as we know in battle yeah. rap so you have a funny like can i dumb found it plug outlet was yeah, like that's hilarious like bro can i say something like, um i wanted to stop you there and i want you to know this yeah i kind of just that's why i love having this airtime to share with people things that i don't think they know i think i've told you before but like you actually have been a heavy influence on me 
That's, like that's I don't know man. if I've ever told you that, but like at one point in my in my career, like especially it was before it was before I battled you the second time. I just I just used to just like watching your battles, bro. Like I would study your battles because that's wild hearing from Diz, bro. Yeah, Real and shit. I and I know I've never told you that. Like, He's and not I, I, I kind of feel like those. I've told this is a guy yeah. who done a hundred more battles than I have, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm gonna tell you why because I feel like it's you just. That's why you just reminded me to say all this because it was the most natural thing to watch. Like I always felt like watching you. It, I was always the most entertained and inspired, and you made me become more funny. Like, I'm mm -hmm. funnier because of watching you. Uh, there's a couple other battlers, but you were definitely the main one. And Thanks, I feel man. like that means a lot for sure. Yeah, man. Like, the, it's the comedic timing. I learned yeah. from that because I have a completely different approach. So, if you look throughout my career, you'll see. He, his influence in my HFK battle, you could see it in like my um, what else battles like any of those battles where I'm being super creative and funny. I'm big T battle like my big T battle. Right, there's right. influence from dumbfounded in it because I understood the whole energy battle because of you. Like you knew how to reflect the energy Man, from aggressiveness. Thanks, you, know you know what? I mean? You know what else you know how to do is make people like you and yeah. it's not something right, you're right. consciously doing right but you just have you're just such a charismatic dude and laid back and i think a part of it comes from i don't want to say self-deprecation but not taking yourself too seriously right. being very self-aware <laughs> which it, translates it, it is hard to to diffuse that if your opponent is angry i mean it, it's easy to diffuse your angry opponent with right. that he's, he's you know what i mean he's good at that yeah i you're mean kryptonite I, I, I just want to continue too off what you're saying so when we battled yeah i want you to know the reason why i shaved my fucking head and and wore, <laughs> that was wore what i wore this fucking so, I, didn't, I, I just so the reason why i did all this yeah. is Full because costume it's by because the way. i wrote <laughs> yeah. everything that i wrote and i was like coming up with all my shit and i knew it was fire but i was like there's no way to beat this guy's comedic fucking timing he's gonna make me look like a fucking angry dude because he's just gonna be like what the fuck's wrong with you da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how i was imagining him coming at me like just like that's making so funny, fun of me bro. like really crazy that's like so he, like the turban outfitter shit that shit that i saw coming that i couldn't do nothing for yeah, yeah like yeah. you shop at turban outfitters <laughs> like that, that type of stuff i just knew yeah. he's so it was it was shit that I couldn't beat, so I'm like, I'm shaving my fucking head. I'm coming that like a lunatic. That was smart play. Actually, it That's was a very, very that. smart thing. It was to I, combat your shit. Nah, real shit. I, I just remember you disappearing like 20, 30 minutes before the battle. <laughs> Everyone's like, what the fuck is this? Walks out with that shit. I was like, oh my God. I Think can't. about the dedication I know. and like the insanity That's how much I was worried about. To alter you. your physical appearance. That's why I respect him, bro. No, I, you got I mean, to. you got to respect this being fool. Yeah. I always <laughs> joke around about this. Like when I talk about this to other people, I'm like, you know, this is he there's nobody who loves battle rap as much as Diz. Like right now, I he's probably in his room with a dartboard and a picture of his opponent in the middle of a fucking dartboard throwing darts at him. I love like, like a joke. This I is why say, he's dangerous to battle. This. Because I you swear to God. This motherfucker. Wait, you, you've been to his house recently? You saw the dartboard? <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. it's, it's there. It's like a conspiracy theorist with like newspaper cutouts on the fucking wall, bro. Of like everything about his fucking opponent, like on the goddamn wall. That's oh, how much this that fool loves. I, I, oh, this is another thing. I remember when we were shooting Bodied, right? It's a movie right. about battle rap. <laughs> I and know what's coming. There's a scene that I needed like Asian jokes <laughs> and like a redhead joke or whatever. So I, I hit up me. this for some help for this, right? Because like. You know, Joseph Kahn, the director, is just expecting us to, like, write these rhymes. And, and I was like, fuck, I, you know, this is, like, homework and shit. So I hit up Diz. And Diz just had, like, a fucking Rolodex, like, <laughs> of, like, fat shit, Asian shit, redhead shit, like, girl shit. Like, a Rolodex of battle oh rap lines, God. bro. Oh but of God. every category, He's bro. He's actually right and, about and, that. You know why, though, I think with him is the... Uh, Diz didn't even come out like at first when he was battling it was more just like I'm gonna kill you whoop de whoop like I'm tougher I'm a better rapper but I think he got so many Arab jokes yeah, yeah, about yeah. him yeah, yeah. that he's like you know what <laughs> fuck that like, like, <laughs> you know what's crazy though that does come from the school 
of showing up to an event and not knowing who the fuck we That's was going to battle. battle shit. It's, I was always like, okay, if I get a dude with a fucking long nose, I have all these nose jokes. <laughs> if, if they're fat, if they're from who here. Who compiles if nose jokes, bro? Like, 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 yeah, no, I had, I had, a, no, I had a nose, a nose bars, bro? I did. Bro. I had a nose This will have nose, nose bars, bro. I did. Wow. I did. And then when I ran into somebody with it, I hit him with it. I, yeah, I got it. That's why I got to give you credit, man. That's why you were up. <laughs> you're an elite. You it's know? dedication. And while he was fully dead focused on that, you were like expanding in other realms. I, I, you know, my whole thing is like, you know, that time I was starting my like rap career, but I've always had interest in, you know, being a personality, hosting shows, creating content. You know, I had a lot of web shows during that time, the hot box, um, where, oh, I, inter the hot box, where yeah. I interviewed some of like big stars right yeah, now. I gave right. Doja Cat her first interview. You, you yeah, know, you had Doja Pack. Cat yeah, in the hot box. I had a huge, you know, these, but these are all like LA people. Like right. these are all LA right. musicians, Amazing. you know, that happen to blow up and shit. Um, Harper when uh, when Anderson was breezy Lovejoy. Yeah, still. exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you know that's my brother. So we still we still are taking our careers from when we started to like TV and film now, and and working together on partnerships. But it's amazing, bro. And that's why I always tell motherfuckers like just stick close to like your peers, you know, as opposed to like trying to get the big dude to hear your demo or whatnot. Your peers mm -hmm. are going to be the next stars. Well, you know it, I mean? it's, it's it's interesting. Like I was always curious how you because we've all dealt with this throughout our rise to success in different ways what was it like when there's all these other people that are our peers but then we attain a certain level of success and they don't and like and then it becomes kind of awkward and they like have expectations like yo put me on did you have to deal with that energy quite a bit i could imagine yeah, of course but, you did you know but the thing about it is it's like it I think getting put on is like there's nothing like about getting you. It just naturally happens with the people you're working with. So if you're working, it's gonna naturally happen. Yeah, it's just not gonna happen because somebody fucking just yeah, puts you on. Yeah, there's no like sword and like you're on. Right. You know what I mean? There but is, there's that false. Um, people people have that belief. I like, came up you know, with everybody I was supposed to come up with. Right. That's it. You know what I mean? There was nobody else. Like there's nothing. Yeah, it's. If you're not on, then it's because we didn't somehow, nothing, it just didn't work naturally. And it's not your fault. It's not my fault. Just something didn't work. You know, something didn't click. You didn't meet me halfway. Maybe I didn't meet you halfway. It's like, it, that's what it is. You know right. what I mean? And it's fine. It's okay. Um, that's a great perspective on that. Nah, it's just, I just know that, you know. And then I also like, with also, it doesn't take one person to put somebody on. It takes a village to make a star, bro. Right. That's why I don't like anybody who walks around as like, I put this dude on. He's the reason right. that he's famous or whatever, bro. I've been around. I, I helped out a lot of you know big stars early on, but I don't take no credit for it. It's me and a lot of people, bro. Just like, like I don't take credit for either one of y'all. Yeah, success. yeah, you gave my you first I mean? fucking important <laughs> battle that changed my life. You know right. what I mean? And I thank you for that. But there's a lot of people who come into our lives that help that journey, right? Right. It takes a village. It takes a whole ass village to make a star, bro. You know, 1, I love that, man. So, that. It's well put, man. Speaking of the village, <clears throat> what's it like for Dumbfounded in Koreatown? There's murals of you. <laughs> Hold on, no, There's no. Where are you from in Korea? Well, well, I'm not from Korea. I'm from Argentina. I'm we Korean. Talked, we talked about that already. <laughs> oh, crazy. All right, so when you go no, there, you just stay in Seoul? Oh, in Korea. Yeah. Uh, oh, when, uh, like, oh when you, you mean go like there. my family, like my grandparents yeah, like and who, stuff. Where are y'all from? I mean, from? like Seoul area. Are you from, you're, so you're from Seoul? Yeah, I'm from Seoul. So, so you're from so. the capital. I mean, I have like my dad's side, if you trace back. I'm trying then. to see if he's like a villager or some shit. Okay. Like, oh, kind of uh, like how well, I am. Like I don't know. I don't know the specificity of it. all that. Like, I don't know the areas, but... Um, I don't have a lot of family in Korea anymore, you know what I mean? So when I go to Korea, I just link with friends. I know a lot of musicians there, actors. Because you have like a life out there, like you. I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm part of that scene. Because when yeah. I when I first was coming up, I was like literally one of a handful of Korean rappers like in the world that was actually doing it. So when I would go to Korea, like I could get shows and shit. Now there's like a thousand Korean rappers, so they can give a and fuck if I go. K-pop is. Yeah, so if I go to Korea, I'm not like popping or anything, but you know what I mean? But they know me because I was part of that scene back in the day too, so. With that being said though, in Koreatown where you reside. Oh, uh, Koreatown? Yeah, I mean, I'm just like a neighborhood dude. Like I'm, a, I'm just like, I'm really like synonymous <laughs> with the community. You know what I mean? Like You're I- You're like a symbol. For the yeah, I, I mean, I love K-Town. I would say there's like a few things from K-Town. Like if you think of K-Town, probably my name might come up, Korean barbecue, karaoke, K-pop. <laughs> I don't know, you know, like a few things might come up and it. I'm definitely going to be part of that history. You know, what Which I mean? is insane. It's That's... dope. I, I just love the idea that like all of us, that we might have a neighborhood that we're attached to or whatever. It's like 
you know, having that pride in it is great. You know what I mean? Um, when are we going to get that BTS dumbfounded feature? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be huge, man. I, I gave BTS interview the first year they debuted. Yeah. If you look up on YouTube, like, I have one of the first interviews with them on, on the stage. That's fire. In this KCON, too. Yeah. But it, I'm not it, surprised because it, it seems I, like you you had your f hand on the pulse before a lot of people. I just, you know, I, I'm, I just I always stay curious about the culture, bro. That's that's and the you know only art. thing. Yeah, it's not, I'm not the best at everything, but I stay curious about everything. And that's what's taken me, like, far and, and gave, me, gave me longevity. You know, I, I love exploring new shit yeah trying different new mediums you know what i mean um is it um have you had people that have seen you and been like oh your bro that got his hand chopped off in power like oh right and only bro, know oh, you from that okay let like, me tell you right now when i was on when i was going on tours during that time like <laughs> you know my tours had a lot of like asian kids white kids you know a few black black people but like <laughs> on all the you know security all this shit they, selling coke to the whores they all the only knew me for power like they didn't know me for my rap they, they don't listen to me or nothing they just like <laughs> you're so that amazing. asian dude from power you know <laughs> they knew me from power <laughs> that is so far more, more, more black people know me from power and roast me than my music for sure <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's that's 100 but that sure. like complements all your different like the assets and different avenues that you have of you because you cover all these demographics you that, have your you know you have your korean fan base you but have that's your, the thing i've done like right. so many Many different that's things him, him, right. so many different things every time i have someone come up to me it's about something different that's amazing it's always about something different and like, we did a movie together and like that was your first movie like and i remember watching you and you had it already figured out like i was seeing you act and i was like man like dumb getting getting like that little actor. small part in power fucked me up though because i did three i did three episodes in like season two or some shit and then like that was the first month like I got a manager for acting and I tried auditioning. I got it and I was like, oh, this is gonna be easy. And after that, I didn't book shit for like a year and a half, bro. It fucked up my whole perception of Hollywood. And I thought it was gonna be easy as shit. It was, it's been a hard ass journey in that world, bro. I'll tell you that. But things are finally starting to kind Aren't of Aren't you working on a film right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, things are finally starting to roll out. And like, um, we got this movie, co-wrote with Anderson Pack. I'm producing it. So um, fire. And we're shooting it later this year. It's, it's gonna amazing. be crazy. It's gonna be nuts. So uh, far. And I'm, I'm developing TV shows right now. I'm still auditioning for shit, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm in like um, Aquafina's show. That's we just got awesome. renewed for a third season. Um, so it's like a little bit of everything, you know. I mean, just trying to. But really, what I want to do is I want to have the whole narrative. Like I want to be able to produce our own shit. You I was know about what to I mean? say, you that's know what I, but thing. what I like though, but it seems like you have a lot of creative control. Like that's what I was gonna say. Like you're saying you're producing it, and now, now, yeah, after starting this whole new. And production I think that's company, the so. most, the main thing. Like we're circling ownership back to that ownership and creative control is king. like really important. That was, and that's always been. If you follow my career, that's always been a thing for me. Like for I sure. always wanted to do shit on my own and. Yeah, have have uh, ownership of the things that we're producing, you know. And it seems like you you're such a creative person that, and I admire the fact that you're able to complete your ideas. But then when you feel like it's reached its conclusion, you'll move on. Like I, I had to, like the hot box was one of those. You know, you had the be, whole knock steady thing. Yeah, you know, you know be real, like. He took my idea. I mean, I'm just going to say it blatantly, but I mean, that's the OG. And he's like the weed god, you know? Right. And, and he actually he hit me. Uh, he gave me props and like even mentioned it. Uh, yeah, no, uh, episode. He was like, this is inspired by Dumb. And he gave me my credit, you know what I mean? Which is, but I was already kind of on the way out with that because I slowed down on smoking weed, you know? Yeah, so you I did, was you, like, you actually quit for a while, yeah, right? Yeah, I quit. That's weed. why I was like, this I show remember. don't make sense to me because, like, I'm not even smoking weed no more like that. <laughs> that's a, like a fraud. Contact. Like a real dude, so I started feeling like, a fraud. I was like, I guess I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I just stopped the show. That, I, I, After I like 50 that. episodes, I just stopped doing the show. That. And I was like, be real makes way more sense to do this show, you know. So that's that's how that happened. Um, yeah, so I, did, I did a hot box with him and shouts out to be real. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, dude, that's the OG. But I mean, yeah, I'm a no, huge no, fan. You know yeah. what? You man, passed him the joint. <laughs> <Pretty much. I laughs> yeah, mean, he passed the joint. And to the OG too, you know. So that's great. Uh, uh, you know what's so crazy too? You and just, it's 420 right you now. You just reminded me. Yeah, 420. That's Look at the time. That we're just Dr. Green Thumb Hour. Um, you know, uh, that that also adds on, like, I want to add on to that. Like, you have so many different things that you've done. You probably forgot that you did a battle league. Like, you had your own, like, <laughs> battle. Like, you yeah. had Until the you bar, bar exam, exam was fire. Yeah, that was like, fun. Like, you, 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 you've... you've You've dabbled in everything, bro. Like that's and you and you were successful at it. The bar exam was fucking fire. I think a lot of that just comes I from it was great. Yeah, thank you. But a lot Absolutely. of that a lot of that just comes from like, you know, it's fun, you know, and like yeah. wanting to do these that events. The I, I love doing events because they're fun. I, I I used to do a party series a while back called Spam and Eggs. That was lit too. 
you know, and like, I just throw, I, I'd love throwing events and, and uh, like, if something's missing in the community, then like, I want to create it. I feel like you guys are like that too, right? With this new league. Absolutely. And that's literally feeling like that. It's feeling like, where the, how come no one's doing this thing? And you're like, fuck, I could do it, but it's going to be tiring. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I take a deep breath, like, shit, I could do it, you know? Uh, but it's going to be exhausting. Like, okay, let's yeah. do it. And But it's just, it's you also knowing, like, if you don't do it, then no one's going to do it. Right. You know, like, no one's going to do it. So no, you, you have call to do it, it how it is. That's, that's Filling the void. You have That's, to, yeah. And then if you're capable of it, that means like it's a gift that, like, that you have that you should, you know, exercise, you know what I mean? And, and you should use to create that thing. So, that's how I feel. I'm like, fuck. If I'm if I don't do this, then who the fuck is gonna do it? You know? Are are you? Do you still have ambitions that you haven't achieved yet musically? Musically, yes. I mean, I would love to have a Grammy. I got a Grammy nomination thanks to um, thanks to Anderson because yeah, we co-produced on a, a Christina Aguilera song. Lit. And so, you was you was just at Coachella performing and, and that shit. Was like, yeah, the yes. crazy, that was probably one of my biggest career milestones. Yo, you looked like a star. Up it there, was amazing. Man. I loved well, it. On the main stage, <laughs> six thirty p.m. Yeah. Uh, you know, not on early, stage, Coachella, not, not, not opening in the morning. It wasn't serving <laughs> breakfast when you were serving not, breakfast no, no. while dumped out <laughs> its rapid. People weren't just going through the, the metal detectors. Yeah, the, uh, it was like Amazing. peak. Um, and shout out 88 Rising for giving me that opportunity. You know, yeah. I mean? it was um, huge. Yeah, and 88 Rising is like. But seeing you on the big really, screen, on the bigger yeah, ones, was like was like wild. crazy. Like it, it was, it you was as a giant up there. People as far right. as I can see. Giant it, dumbfounded. And I'll be honest, man, like I've definitely slowed down a lot on music as I'm transitioning into this next chapter of my life. But that really felt like it sent me off, like kind of properly. You know, it, it really did feel like that. Just putting me on one of the biggest stages and it just felt really dope. Because that, that, that's either going to do that or that's going to, with someone like you, could potentially inspire you to be like, you know what, fuck it, I need to make another record. Yeah, now. yeah, like, no, real shit. That's how I felt. I'm like, you know what, I, I miss this shit. Man, I miss this feeling. It's amazing to see how far you came in, just how well composed you are, just how you, how, how just, you look younger, you've been taking care of yourself, you work out, man, you're kind of I actually, you know, this, <laughs> the most hilarious thing is I got completely pull-ups. wasted last night and like I got into physical altercation with my closest friends. <laughs> What? It's okay. It happens. Sometimes. I got extremely drunk last night. Don't and make me, up. And, me and one of my best friends that we've never ever put hands on. We fought yesterday. Oh my god! Well, and you it, look like you, you look no, like no, you no, won. No, 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 no. Either one of us connected. None of, we were so wasted. Either one of us one connected, of and then we apologized in the morning. Oh, but, that's amazing. But I, 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 I was like, don't try that shit with me, bro. I was wasted till like four in the morning. Yeah, but um, thank you, bro. I appreciate. It. But I am the most. You will healthiest. connect. No, no, your shit is inspiring too. No, Honestly, you know, I look at your IG stories, and I'm like. Fuck, I gotta just get healthier. Like I for real. Dude, I'm bro. fat right now. When I got sober, but I got you, fat. Like you like, on it too. That, on your journey too, bro. I you know, I have my own like demons and things I'm working out with addiction. I, a lot of people don't know this, you know, because you know, a lot of us, you know, we have that, but we don't put it out there like that. You know, some right. do, but I've never put it out there because I'm like I'm trying to I did a voice on Disney movie, you know what I mean? Like I'm not <laughs> trying, but, you know <laughs> that fucking smile. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying Let's I go, have my you know, I told I told about this like, you know, back in the day, the whole jump off shit, me and Sat, like we were a little druggy kids, you know right. what I mean? We're doing drugs, drinking, freestyling for drugs <laughs> to, to the plug. Like it's like he loved hearing it and just racking up lines and shit. It's amazing. So but you know, but that's a journey. The health shit has been a big thing for me the last couple of years. I I just really wanted to just full on just seeing how much you like just like I, i'm just looking at you from a from from an like where you you were looking at like the perspective of like you coming here and you're in the bloat and i used to run into you out here bro you were like a you know like I'm not. I don't feel bad saying this because you're in such good condition. Like you were like a fucking dirty little nerd. I was. I was a you greasy were, you, kid. Yeah, bro. People you definitely say I look better just now the than way then because I was a yourself, greasy ass kid. You look younger kid. now than you used to. I was a to. greasy it's like kid. Like a punk rocker, damn near. Like, I feel was, like uh, this is a yeah. reoccurring theme with the people we interviewing recently. Like even with Tash and just like a lot of people are starting to care about this health thing. Like seeing you. Yeah, like this. I heard about Tash's like journey yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Amazing. I mean, dude, it's a hard name to live up to the alcoholics. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, that is a hard name. To literally, live up to. Oh, he's smart. Tash literally. is one of my smart favorite founded. rappers too, by the way. Like, I yeah, like oh, same here, yeah, man. Like, we I have big to let influence him know. on me. Like, just the way he rapped. Like, we literally talked we, about this. I told yeah, him yeah. that dumb, like, because he like was tripping. I told him like he influenced me harder than damn sure. any rapper just the, ever. The bro. looseness of his flow, right. and like it, it really did feel like he was just sipping a, a beer or something while yeah. freestyling incredibly like it just sounded yeah, like that see, you, we were part of that same cloth where we got it we, yeah. we felt like Tash was going to be the incredible. best next dude incredible like he was, you know loved I mean? it yeah man oh, that's fine well, that's, that's amazing bro um, I 
I just gotta ask yeah. before we sky up out this motherfucker. What would it take? <laughs> to get the no return, <laughs> it's because you you made you got, it look like you you. you I'm not gonna lie, you know. You I got find, so much going on. Because we know I you find itch. opportunities to write battle raps. Like, for instance, like I'm I'm, I'm trying to develop a battle rap show, TV show, and Ooh, there's okay. like a big studio attached on, to it right now. Right but that doesn't mean anything yet until like things get greenlit. But I'm working on it. Let us and, know. And, 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 yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And I'm trying to get all uh, like battle rappers either in it or like writing, consulting, or consulting yeah. writing, all that stuff. And, but I, I literally, I love that because when we put together the deck and stuff, I had to write like lines for it and I just loved it. You know what I mean? And just writing lines. And just again. writing you're still rap, good at it. rap, battle raps for weird shit. You know why you're still good it. at it too is because you didn't write within like following a trend like a lot of these people do. So it was a natural thing for you. You wrote from a comedic aspect and you've always been funny and you're always going to be. It ain't on you. So it it's not going to, yeah, it's it, straight I, up. It's something that's part you know, of you. You know, it's funny. Every time I, I did a lot of those old grind time battles, I really wrote for people who are going to watch the video. Mm. I didn't really write for the opponent. I was like, I want, makes a lot of sense. I want the kid who's at home watching the video and then his mom hovers over and they're both going to love it. Like that's what I always thought about when I was writing the shit. Like, I wanted the audience to love it. If yeah. you saw my battle style, like, I'm not in people's faces. I look at the crowd. No, yeah, I'm yeah. like, you do. And you used to talk to the guy. camera. Like, let's all laugh at this guy. You used, that to, was rap, my you whole used vibe. to rap to the camera a lot, too. I, that was my you whole thing. It was like, I, it was just like, let's, like, look at this guy. Like, exhibit A. You know what I mean? That's the style that I always had. Mm. And I did that because, like, yeah, it's like, I want to, this is going to get them to the masses. This is the video. That's going to be the big thing. You so know what smart, I mean? Man. With that being said. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. So, <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? To be honest, at this point, bro, like, just because I'm so not, like, in the battle rap scene, I'm almost, like, down to do it because of that. You know? Like, I... I because you, you moved on to the acting and the other 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 avenues, you feel like this now could it, be like a hobby it, and it doesn't it affect your direct... It could be a direct, fun thing. I, I, like, it doesn't affect For instance, direct like, trip. I would battle Jin. Fuck yeah. Come on, like, man. I, I would, I, we, we you know why? Because, Jin, because obviously Jin is like the other legend Asian guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And they all every time I'm brought up, Jin's brought up, I'm like... So that can, would be, can we say this is a, a GTX, but like of course friendly call out. Jin from the it's, it's a friendly call out, and, and, and I think out? I think Jin would appreciate it too. I think Jin is actually one time we were drinking or whatever. He's like, I'm pretty sure it. he'd be down, bro. That would be a, well. I'll be pleased to let you guys know that me and Jin are very close homies. Like, yeah, yeah, no, Jin's, straight up, he's like a great guy. Do, First of all, Jin is an like he's family to me. Like bro. he's not even like a friend. He's family. Like, you know, Jin's it's funny. Family. People would never know that. People yeah, would never know. know we're cool. Like after our battle, like yeah, after yeah. all the Asian people <laughs> were so <laughs> mad at this one. It, it, so, it don't work like that. I know. People were just so mad at this one all the time, trying to defend me. You know, they're like, "What the fuck?" Like, yeah, you know, all the shit. And not yeah. knowing, like we but go get, way back like, since we were kids, kids and came shit. At me like that too. Like yeah. they're just like, oh, you know, it's just like, bro, it's a battle. But but <laughs> I, 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 Jen is one that comes to mind because I just think for the culture that'd be very fun, and I think it'd be dope to no, have that's, one, have one that goes two generations of like the big Asian dudes in battle rap. And I always wonder too why there isn't any other new like exciting Asian battle so, rappers. So, like still, you know, like why is and you know the last shout to A class. A, yeah, A class and, and tantrum. All the, all these guys, we're all part of that generation. But I'm just saying, like since then, they're really. I don't understand why there isn't. So know? by the time this comes out, this interview, the world's gonna know about Ouroboros. You know what I mean? And what that is is a grind time reunion event that's happening over the summer. Oh wow! And it's literally gonna be. That's tight. All of it. And guess who's coming back? Who? Your boy. Who? You? No, your boy. Well, Sat. satire. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Watch out. I always was a fan of Sat battling, bro. He so, was always that reverse live. So one. if he comes, like, you know, you should probably come and dip back in it. Okay, Maybe so we'll you're saying you're, say it's a reunion thing where everyone's battling? Yes. Or what? Yeah, okay. we're all going to be on the card. Just pretty much as, my, as many of us as possible and some newer yeah. generation people, but it's going to feel like the old days. Something gonna, to think about. Yeah. For sure. when, when is this? What month? We look in early August right now. Early August. Yeah. Ooh, that's right around the corner, bro. Kind of. It's like three, four months, man. Come on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's trying to sell me on it. He's trying to sell me on it. With that being said. Because, yeah, you see, that's why if I commit to it, I start, I'm going to start thinking now so then it's going to drive me crazy, Start thinking apart. It's going to start. Well, yeah. just know that GTX, the grind time is always going to be your home. Of regardless. course, bro. And grind uh, time is like, that's, that's family. That's the roots, the origins of everything. You know, one of the most pivotal moments of my career. I... You know, I, I've done a lot of shit, and obviously even Project Blood, all that stuff. But one of the, I would say one of the most impactful things is my time at Grind Time that made me who I am, as dumbfounded as 
the fans and what like yeah. the impact this that it made foundation. in the culture yeah, like that was huge name around that, time. that was like, huge yeah. grind time was a big thing for me bro real shit and man. you've kept the momentum going and man, i just man. hope that it's not a not as long of a period of time where I before I see you again. So hopefully this. Nah, is... we're gonna find ways to work together, bro. Yeah. For sure, hundred percent. Anything you want to plug in before we get a par? I have a podcast called Fun with Dumb. Yeah, uh, we stream it live every Tuesday at one p.m. Pacific time, and then we put it out on every platform every Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Check it's, out it's, my it, episode it's on dope, there too. It's a dope it's podcast. Funny as fun. fun with Dumb with Disaster is a funny yeah, ass episode. Yeah, it's a good episode. one. Yeah, it's, it's a really a good, good one. one. They were using it for some other yeah, shit yeah, too. Yeah, like, please yeah, check it out. Fun with Dumb, and then yeah, look out, man. I'm telling you, I got, I got some TV and film shit coming. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. I'm gonna see you on the screen. It's be crazy. Man. Let's go. Well, that being said, man, God tier podcast, man. We out. Yes, sir. Biatch out this biatch.